All thanks and praises unto our power, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wawakakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth. To the, rest, to the rest of the church who believe as well, you men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons and daughters also. The water to Yahweh Shai because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. So at this current moment, as we wait upon our Lord, Every second being in this captivity, it is bitter. But we do have hope. We do have hope and we can't lose focus on our hope. Every day seems the same. Every day seems repetitive, but guess what? Every day is not the same. Every day is different. No matter how much the days melt together for certain of us, Every day just kind of feels like yesterday. You know, it just seems like things are kind of dragging along. But every day is not the same. Every day is another day closer to the kingdom of heaven. Even more so now. You know, can you imagine going back over 2,000 years and in your mind you're thinking the kingdom of heaven might come next year, next week, not knowing <laughs> there's a whole 2,000 plus years that has to come and go. Different prophecies have to come to pass. That would be so disheartening. But understanding where we are now through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we're at the actual end. Okay? Now let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, and verse 12. Hope deferred make it the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. So right now, it seems like our hope is just dragging along. It's prolonging, you know, and as it's dragging along or prolonging, so it seems, it can cause your mind to be sick. You know, you can fall into depression. You end up overly frustrated, stressed out, just weighed down in your mind. But that's also the importance of... Um, remaining in the scriptures because waiting on the Lord and then let's say we're not plugged into our power and then we start to get weak seeing our hope is being deferred it seems like everything that we want and desire is just put on hold okay if we're not careful we can get caught up and sifted out and, and none of us who are sincere who are really about this want that to happen so the time will come where the Lord will bring to pass our salvation. And when it comes, boy, oh boy, it's going to be so worth it. You know, imagine being on a hot desert in Egypt and you're sweating, no food, no water in sight. Your throat's dry. You feel like at any time you're about to collapse and just die. And just the thought of you thinking about water, <laughs> it would just seem so amazing. And it just seems like the water can't come in time, <laughs> right? Out of nowhere, next thing you know, somebody at a distance comes driving in a vehicle and they see you and you're, wa you're waving your hands in the air and they uh, spot you and they come and uh, send you supplies and water and things that you need, shelter you, get you to a cool area. Well, that's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do, okay? We just have to keep that hope, all right? And when we get weak, we have to remain in the words of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So let's read this again in Proverbs 13 and 12. Hope deferred make it the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, and it's coming, man, it's coming. We are at the end of this captivity. We are finally at a point in our life, in our history, that we are going to see our salvation. We are going to see our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, 
return with a host of holy angels to deliver his elect and to destroy all of his enemies. Okay? Hope deferred. Okay, hope that's being prolonged, so it seems. Make it the heart sick. And we know according to Jeremiah 17, your heart goes into your mind, your lob. Okay? But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. And we can't wait until that desire comes, but we know it's coming. But in times that we may feel sick in the mind, we have to remain in the word. Okay? Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 119 and verse 28. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. So hope deferred makes our heart sick. But through this word, we are being strengthened. That's why it's important for us to maintain our integrity by holding on to this truth. Okay? Staying locked and loaded. Watching brothers' videos. Encouraging one another. Having love for one another. Not being jealous of one another. Not comparing yourself to the next brother. But be grateful for the lot that the Lord has placed you in. Because at the end of the day, out of all the people on the earth, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai decided that he was going to allow us to receive this truth and have a fighting chance out of billions of people. And on top of that, you have to be an Israelite. Okay, so times are difficult. Times do get hard, but we also have to have a balanced mind. We have to focus on all the great things the Lord is doing for us as well. And we also have to lock into the scriptures, man. Okay, there's times where you may find yourself drifting away and then suddenly you see a change in your attitude, you're, you're, you're finding yourself to be more mopey, you're complaining more, you're not as um, inspired. Not saying that doesn't make you the elect because none of us are perfect, but that's just a sign that maybe you have to lock back in the word. You have to lock back into the energy source, okay? So Psalms 119 and 28, my soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. And this word strengthens me. When I hear brothers teaching, not just brothers who have been in this truth for years, when I hear brothers teaching, even brothers who are young in the faith, who just came in like only a year old, six months, two, three years, I don't care. If you're bringing out the words of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai in spirit and in truth, I am inspired by that. And it helps me. And you play a very, very important uh, uh, role in my life, man, being able to just watch brothers Bring out the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? It keeps me strengthened. Okay? And we're being strengthened according to the word. Okay? Let's go to Psalms 107. Well, let's read this one more time and we'll go to Psalms 107. Psalms 119 and 28. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy soul. And, and, and it's like we go through so much heaviness. As we wait upon our Lord. Okay. This knowledge, wisdom and understanding. Can really put us in a heavy mentality. Let me see here. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 1 and verse 18. For much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases knowledge. Increases sorrow. So the more that we increase knowledge. We increase sorrow. When you come into this truth. Okay. You're looking forward to better. You're looking forward to salvation. And then as the days go on, throughout your uh, time and your belief, it seems like every day is the same. It seems like you're, you're uh, just talking to yourself or you're, you're a broken record, okay? But every day is not the same. Every day is another day closer to the kingdom, even more so today, because we're actually in that generation, okay? For much wisdom is much grief, and this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is the top wisdom that you can receive, and that's where the grief comes in. And then that grief causes us to want to get out this captivity, but then it becomes deferred, and then that makes our minds sick. So we lock into this word, man. That's what keeps us strengthened. That's what keeps us hopeful, is believing in the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, okay? And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. When you come into this truth, you're going to find yourself being tested, going through many trials, okay? The Lord is really going to test you, especially when you first come in, to see what you're made of. 
And if you hold on tight, the, the beautiful fruit that you receive from fighting and enduring, you can't buy that with money. Okay, you cannot buy that with money. And most people around you will not understand that. John chapter one and 14. And the word was made flesh, speaking of Yahweh Shai. So it's the word that heals us, man. And Yahweh Shai is the actual word that heals us. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. So the word was made flesh and it's through the word that we are being healed. It's through the word that we're being strengthened. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Psalms 107. Psalms chapter 107 and verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So this word is healing our people. Ultimately, the word is Yahweh Shai. Ultimately, when Yahweh Shai was sent, he's the one that came to heal our to heal our people. Okay? And when he comes back again, the third time, because many people say it's the, the, the second return, when he's making a third return because he appeared again a second time after being crucified for 40 days unto his disciples. Okay? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So it starts with us receiving this word. This word heals us. Why? Because the spirit of Yahweh Shai is within the word. He is the word embodied. Yahweh Shai is the word made flesh. So this word is healing our people. So yeah, our hope may be deferred and it makes our hearts sick. That's why it's important for us to do these videos because these videos encourage our brothers, man. And it keeps us in the spirit so that we may be able to fight, okay? Because this is definitely a fight. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And that's what's happening right now. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is sending his words through his men because the word was already sent. In fact, he was crucified, okay? But the word is still here. It's found within the scriptures and his men, his servants, his friends have the spirit to bring it out in real time. Let's go to the book of Mark. Chapter one and verse 30, going into an example of the word healing people being Yahweh Shai. But Simon's wife's mother, uh, Mark chapter one and 30, but Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and Annan, they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. So when Yahweh Shai was on earth, he healed many people that were sick from diverse diseases and, and devils and, you know, different demons. Okay. Yahweh Shai cured Simon's wife's mother. Okay. She was laying sick of a fever. Okay. And guess what? He took her by the hand and immediately she got healed. All right, because the word who is Yahweh Shai embodied is healing our people. And that's the importance of us bringing out the word because the words coming out of the scriptures are actually alive. These words are spirit and life because the spirit of Yahweh Shai is in it. Okay. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. So he healed Many. Why? Because the word is healing our people. It starts with the word, Yahweh Shai. Okay? The word found in the Bible, that's Yahweh Shai's spirit. Okay? Now let's close it with this here. Um, what is that? You know what? I'll probably just 
let it go there. But at the end of the day, you know, Yahweh Ba Shami Awa Shai is healing his people through this word, through the washing of the word. Okay? The true baptism actually comes through receiving this word. Okay? The true cleansing, although people may struggle with different uh, ailments in their bodies, and I look forward to being able to heal people in that manner too, but first, it starts with this word. Okay? We have to be mentally free. Let's go to John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So knowing this truth, that's what makes you mentally free. The majority of our people are mentally in bondage. They're enslaved, okay? And they don't understand that they are enslaved, but we have been set free through the word. We are being healed through the word. And when we go through our moments, seeing that our hope is deferred, it's locking into the, to the scriptures, locking into the spirit of Yahweh by Shemi Shai and different, different ways of going about it, whether it's, you know, reading on your own time, um, listening to brothers' videos, prayer, fasting, um, you know, just different things that can help us to remain locked and loaded in times that we may feel worn out, times that we may feel weakened. We have to understand that our spirit wants to have the ability to just go full force, but our, our stupid flesh is what tries to hold us back. But now that we know this truth, we've been mentally set free. We've been set free from the bondage that the majority of Israel is dealing with okay that's a part of the sickness as well is being mentally captivated not knowing who the hell you are that is a sickness found amongst our people and Yahweh Shai his spirit is in the earth and he's healing people okay and a time will come where his men will actually start healing people literally so Lord willing this lesson it was simple and edifying I'm going to give all thanks and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wabra Kakwadash. Lord willing, this was simple and edifying. Shalom.